wanted to be a judge who knows just what is right and wrong and be good and be strong and on my swan up in the air I'm flying searching for justice can't you see me trying right is But because I am a good liar, I know what we can do. Let's hear the judge. Yes, because only our friend Klaus can solve it. I hear the wisdom coming from the gnomes now. And all together we have got the know-how. Because we are people of peace. Looks like an important letter. What have we here? Ah, yes, this one needs my signature. Let me just sign this, and then I'll give it right back to you, all right? This will just take a moment. For crying out loud, can't they make a pen that works? I'm going to get a ballpoint. There you are. Now take care of this, and please be careful of that ink. It's still wet and could stain your feathers. squawking about. Ah, yes, I guess you're just like everybody else around here. You want to be paid for your work. Here's your reward. You've certainly earned it. Oh, what's this? Another quill? Oh, that is so generous and thoughtful. I can't begin to thank you enough. I shall certainly treasure this always. <laughs> sure, you can toss that old one out. Now that I have this nice new one, I don't need it anymore. Hello. Oh. Goodbye, my friends. Always nice seeing you. Good help is so hard to find. I wish they would pay more attention to what they are doing. Thank goodness no one was here to see my face like this. How humiliating. Oh, well, I should go. I suppose these things happen. They just don't happen to me. Ah, oh, well, ever since my assistant Danny got married, I've been pretty much on my own. And to tell you the truth, it's been a little lonely without him. I really miss that jolly fellow. Hello? Hello, dinner's almost ready. Oh my goodness, what happened to you? Nothing happened, Juliana. Why? What's the matter? You look like somebody took an ink pen and squirted it all over your face, Klaus. Oh, that's because of those silly birds who deliver me the mail. Birds? Looks like you've been playing with the pigs if you want my opinion. I swear, Klaus, you behave like a little boy sometimes with all the trouble you manage to get yourself into. One would think you're a mere child of 70 the way you carry on. I'll fix you something warm to drink. You stay here and see if you can stay out of trouble, all right? Whew. Well, hello, my little friends. I hope you're behaving yourselves, not getting into any trouble like my friends the birds. Would you care to hear about one of my most exciting adventures with my assistant Danny? It's guaranteed to thrill you. Actually, it involved rare contact with large humans, something we gnomes don't generally get involved with. This happened many, many years ago. I was in my office and... <laughs> Danny, do you have to do that now when I have so much work to do? If I'm going to be able to play my best tomorrow, then my equipment has to be in top working condition. The star of the team has to set a good example for the other players, right, Your Honor? Danny, my friend, isn't there anything else in the whole wide world that you think about besides hockey? Oh, come on, Judge. This is one of the most important matches of the season, and we've just got to win it to get into the finals. Well, if it's not too much to ask, Star, would you answer the door? Yes, can I help you? A letter for Judge Klaus. Mmm. Smells like tulips. Must be from Holland. Hmm. Thanks a lot. So long. <laughs> hmm. He's right. This does smell like tulips. Smell this, Judge. Hmm. This letter is from my good friend Freddy from Holland. He says he wants us to come see him at once and that it's very important. We should leave immediately. Get Henry ready. Who 
Who's Freddy, and why is it so urgent that we leave right away? You remember Freddy. He's the gnome who lives in the garden of the man who wrote that book about us. Oh, you mean the book of the gnomes, the one that's all about us gnomes. Yes, indeed, my boy. That's the very one I'm talking about. In fact, I'd like to meet that man and tell him a thing or two about that book he wrote and set the record straight once and for all, Danny. Did he happen to say in his letter what the urgency is all about? I mean, why is it so important he see us right away? There's trouble with the man's garden. He has many hens, geese, and ducks, and there's some horrible animals causing problems. The animals belong to the man, not Freddy, so what's the big deal? Freddy is a dear old friend, and if he writes and says it's urgent, it must be. We leave immediately. Huh? What? You heard me. Go get Henry and get him ready for the journey. Oh, but Judge, I can't leave. We're having our big hockey playoffs tomorrow. Well, that's a shame, Danny, but I understand Holland is very beautiful this time of year, but I guess you'll be too busy playing hockey to see it. That's too bad. Why does anyone have to go with you? Why don't you just go yourself? Well, I need someone to do all the courtroom drawings for me, write up all my verdicts, and keep exact records of all my cases. You know, the things you generally do for me, Danny. I guess I'll find someone else. All right, all right, you win, I'll go. Who wants to play in a crummy hockey tournament when I could go to Holland? and see the land of the tulip. Besides, you couldn't replace me anyway, Judge. You're absolutely right, Danny. You're a tough act to follow, and I would be hard-pressed to replace you. In fact, going somewhere without you wouldn't be the same. Get your things together. We leave soon. Well, there goes the championship. This sure is beautiful, Judge. Looking at it from way up here, it looks like the sea is trying to take over the land, doesn't it, Judge? That's actually pretty close to the truth, Danny. All the land that you see down there has been reclaimed from the water by the Dutch. No kidding, really? That's the truth, my boy. Not only that, but the sea is always trying to recapture the land, so the Dutch have to be on guard to fight back the sea, otherwise Holland would be underwater. Excuse me, Judge, but there's something moving down there. Henry, take us down closer to that rock. Hey, hey, down here! Is that gnome signaling us? Yes. It looks like he's stranded down there. In that case, we'd better head down there and help him. Henry, take us down to that big rock. <laughs> oh, thank goodness you got here in the nick of time. It was lucky for me you happened by. I was just about to drown. I'm very relieved that you're safe, and there's nothing to worry about. Henry will take us far away from here. <clears throat> Judge, we'd better get out of here right away, otherwise we'll all be seafood. Come on, Henry, get us out of here now. Woohoo, that was close. Thank you for saving my life. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Emil, son of Vileto. I'm Judge Klaus, and this is my assistant, Danny. I was almost killed by those darn nasty trolls. They are to blame for starting this flood. Bad figures. You can say that again. Recently, several of them showed up here. It's been nothing but trouble since they arrived. It's been awful. It's Pit and Holler. I'll bet you anything. I won't bet. I know it's them. And as usual, they're up to no good. Emil, what has happened to all those windmills? It's those trolls once again. They broke all of the wheels, so the windmills couldn't pump the water up. The wind makes the windmill vanes turn. That turns the water wheel, which pumps the water from the lowlands up the canals and out to sea. That's incredible, Emil. And that's how we keep the land dry. If the windmills don't operate, the land will flood from the rain and the sea. We'd better find those trolls soon, or we'll have a catastrophe on our hands, Emil. I know where we can find them. That's not the problem. Doing something about it's another story. Let's go to Alzmir, my hometown. My goodness, Judge, look at all those beautiful flowers down there. Those are my tulip plantations. Here in Alzheimer, we grow the most beautiful tulips in all of the world, Danny. Oh, no, look at that. It looks like you had a hurricane down there. It's not a hurricane, my friends. It's those nasty trolls. Yes, you're right, Emil. It looks like they're handiwork, all right. Let's head down and have a closer look. There's no doubt about it. Here are their tracks. Whew, what a stink. From the smell of things, they can't be too far away. And there is no reason for them to do anything like this. It's just that they can't stand to see anything beautiful. We'd better watch our step, because with our bright red hats, we might be mistaken for tulips and trampled along with the rest of the flowers. At least we can get out of the way. I pity the poor creatures who can't. We're going to have to do something, Danny, and do it right away. Uh-huh. Uh, what are you planning? Don't worry, Danny. It's all up here. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out a plan yet, but I will. <laughs> Those trolls must be somewhere near. It looks as though this poor goose got in their way. Poor little fellow. Tell me, friend, did the trolls do this to you? <laughs> Tell me another thing. Are they very far from here? Huh? <laughs> Do you hear that? It sounds like holler and pit for sure. And it sounds to me as if those trolls have gotten themselves another poor goose. So tell me, Emil, what's that hanging down over there? Eh? Oh, that's a beehive. 
Yes, I thought so. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We'll gather up some tulips and get over to the beehives right away. Does that mean you've come up with a plan, Your Honor? I'll tell you later, Danny. Right now, let's get to work. There. That's plenty. Let's go now. We should hurry. Those trolls smell yeah. closer all the time. Now push the tulip petals into the beehive. <clears throat> We're lucky none of those bees came out and stung us. Now what? Now we have to figure a way to lure those trolls here, Danny. The goose has a decoy. Don't worry, my little friend. I won't let anything happen to you. I give you my word. All you have to do is stand here and cackle until the trolls show up. There's nothing to fear. You have nothing to worry about. I guarantee it. Will you help us out and be our decoy? <coughs> Come on, we'll hide behind that hill over there. Hurry now. Wait for me. Now start to cackle. <coughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I do believe I hear a goose and he's playing our song. I tell you what I find about Cookie's Goose. <laughs> <laughs> that goose keeps on cackling. The cackling sounds like it's coming from over there. I think we should hold off smashing these flowers until we go over and wring that goose's neck. You know, I just love to play bop the goose on the beak. Yeah, or pin the tail on the goose. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good, they swallowed our bait. <laughs> Hold on, Bean Brain, look at that. You forgot to smash those. We'll wreck those and then we'll get the goose. I'll show you. Like this. Bullseye. <laughs> no, my poor head, what is this, what is this junk? <laughs> what? Why me? Why always me? I just hate when this happens. <laughs> Even the goose is laughing. My friend, it looks like you've had the last laugh after all. And don't worry about your feathers. Those trolls will feel those bee stings long after your feathers have grown back. Bye. Well, Goodbye. Well, I should be headed back myself. But first, thank you, Brother Noms, for saving my life and solving my problems. Thank you, Judge Klaus, and thank you, Danny. There's no need to thank me, Emil. That's what gnomes are for, to help each other out. I'm glad I could be of service. Now we must go. My friend Freddy is waiting for me and Danny to arrive at his it's home. It's been a pleasure meeting you. The pleasure was all mine, Danny. I thank you again for me and the tulips. You were a big help. Goodbye, so Emil. Hope you take care of yourself, you hear? So long. Goodbye. So long. Goodbye. So long. Goodbye. So long, Emil. Danny, this looks like Freddy's. That house is huge. Yes, it's quite big, isn't it? Down here, Henry. <sighs> Freddy should be around here somewhere. I still can't get over how big this house is for a little gnome. Freddy doesn't live in the whole house, just a small portion of it. Clown? Huh? Hello, welcome, my welcome. friends. Welcome to Holland. Oh. <laughs> we heard you were coming. I'm so glad you're here at last. I can't tell you how glad we are to be here. Isn't that right, Danny? Yes, that's absolutely correct. We're here and we're happy to help you in any way we can, my friends. Well, that's very reassuring to hear, but the help is not for us, but for the human who occupies its house. Are you talking about the author of those books about gnomes? Is that whom we're supposed to help out? That's exactly who we're talking about, Danny. <laughs> Have you seen them? Actually, I've been very busy lately and haven't had a chance to read them, but I did look at the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, exactly what is it that you want us to do, my friend? I want you to talk to this man. You want us to talk to a man? We would like you to talk to the man and with his wife, if that is possible. But I don't know if that is possible. We've never done anything like that before. You're absolutely we? right, Danny. But remember, many thousands of years ago, gnomes lived in harmony with man. Then we went our separate ways. That's true, Danny. Nowadays, things are very different between man and gnomes. Of course, Will, the man who lives in this house, is different from other men. He accepts us gnomes for what we are. That's true. And his wife, Anne, is very different than other women, Judge Klaus. Well, my friends, it's Sounds to me like you have a very exceptional case here living in this big house. Everything about these people is exceptional, Your Honor. Just meet with them and you'll be able to see for yourself. Why not? What do we have to lose, George? Very well, we shall meet with these people, Danny. That's great. I'm so glad you see things my way. Huh? Ah, I forgot to tell you about the dogs, but don't let them bother the two of you. They are good friends. They won't hurt you. Well, well, what do we have here? Ooh. Ooh. Hello, Will. I'd like to introduce you to my good friends, Judge Klaus and his assistant, Danny. Judge Klaus? Not the famous Judge Klaus. One in the same. Well, I must say this certainly is a privilege to meet Judge Klaus, and it is an honor to make your acquaintance, Danny. Thank you. Uh, no, really, the honor's all mine. You don't need to be afraid, Danny. Will's a good friend. 
And tell me, to what do I owe this great honor of meeting you, Judge Klaus? They have come all the way here to help you, Will. To help me? That's correct. Very well. Klaus, Danny, would you come in, please? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Bye. We have company. Welcome, friends. Please make yourselves at home. Ah, pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Likewise. Please, won't you sit down? Huh? Mm hmm? Have a cup of ice-cold lemonade. It's my special recipe. To the friendship between gnomes and man. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Me too. Cheers. <laughs> ah. Cheers. So you're the author that wrote that book about us. Well, yes, oh, I am. We wanted other men to get to know about gnomes and learn from your way of life. I don't think our friends totally appreciated the book about the gnomes, my dear. Well, the book was rather amusing, and I did quite enjoy reading about my old friends, David and Lisa. He's a very wise man. It was nice to see someone devote a book to David. He's one of the best gnome doctors. However, there were some errors. Yes, Klaus, I suppose you're right. It's hard to be accurate in a book that size. What did you think about the television series? It was all right, but it would have been a lot better if you'd contacted us before you went ahead and made it. Judge Klaus is right, Will. We human beings seem to believe we know everything about everything, and that's just not the case. I will admit that after talking with Freddy and Karen, I did think I knew everything about gnomes. That's quite all right. Why don't we just forget about all this and get to the main reason you wanted our assistance? All right, I don't know where to begin. I'm at a total loss. I just don't know what to do. I am having a big problem with predators attacking my prize hens and geese that I keep in my garden. I have already lost over 40 hens and two of my geese this year alone. I want it to stop, but I don't know what to do about it. And that, gentle gnomes, is my problem. Well, what do you think? We could have a forest courtroom and put the animals on trial. That's what we normally do. I'm afraid that would be of no use. I've already had Freddy and Karen explain to the animals that what they are doing is wrong. What do we have to lose? Maybe this time will be different with Klaus presiding as the judge. While it sounds like a good idea, Will would have to give evidence. And once the animals saw a man, they would all run away. Why don't you just lock up the hens and geese to protect them? No, I refuse to do that. I won't be a party to locking up an animal. I believe that all living creatures should run free. I'll need some time to ponder this brand new case. First, let me speak with Freddy and Karen. You will probably find them outside. They usually like to stay near the garden. That's just perfect. Because if you don't mind, I'd like to look at the garden. Of course, you don't need to ask. I'll be happy to show it to you. Hello, my little ones. How are you today? My birds are so frightened. Poor things, they spend all their day hiding in fear that they will be the next ones to be carried off. Yes, that's such a tragedy because you have such a magnificent home and garden, your birds should feel safe here. Yeah, they should, Judge Klaus. It's criminal. The whole reason I decided to build my home here was because it seemed so peaceful, so removed from the hustle and bustle of civilization. Now this has to happen to my birds. It seems such a shame that the country is as uncivilized as civilization itself. Uh, thank you very much for showing us your lovely home. Now I would like to be alone with my fellow gnomes, if you don't object. Of course. I appreciate any help that you can give me. We are very exhausted from our long journey. We will rest for a while at our friends, and then later on this evening, we will see what we can do about your problem. You two have a nice rest, and I'll see you later. Silence and order in the court. I would now like to hear from the prosecutor, please. Your Honor, these six animals have been responsible for all the havoc and attacks of the innocent creatures in the garden. They don't even respect a hen who was only trying to protect her young. They chased off the mother and every one of her chicks, Your Honor, with the least bit of care. And that little fox over there caught an aged gander by surprise just the other night. He chased it all around the garden without the least bit of compassion. The hawks are always in the sky, forcing all law-abiding animals to live in fear that perhaps they will be the next victim. It is a totally intolerable and exasperating situation. Hmm. How does the defense counsel respond? If it would please the court, Your Honor, I would like to explain the motivation of these animals. We all agree that all creatures have a right to eat, but these poor animals can't find food anywhere else because they are continually hunted and trapped by human beings, Your Honor. I think when you take these circumstances into consideration, Your Honor, you will realize that their actions were justified, that every animal has a right to survive. It is their nature to hunt for food. Thank you. Hmm. I have reached my verdict. All animals are forbidden from hunting any animals on or near the gardens of Will. But, Your Honor, the human hunters hunt the foxes and the hawks for sport. This Will is just another man who cares only for the welfare of his animals. 
The hunting that goes on in the areas near this place could not be used as a reason to take revenge against this man Will and his wife Anne because they are not hunters. They merely wish to live here in harmony. Now I must know if the defendants are willing to sign my verdict or not. Will you sign? That's enough. With all due respect, Your Honor, these animals are not in agreement. Their natural instinct to hunt is much more powerful than the power of reason, I'm afraid, Your Honor. I am quite familiar with the laws of nature. Thank you very much, Counselor, and believe me when I tell you that we gnomes are not trying to change it. But I uphold my verdict that the animals will not be allowed to hunt in this man's garden or anywhere near his house, for that matter. But, Your Honor, they are animals, and as such, they do not recognize the boundaries of human beings. I understand what you are saying, but as animals, they possess an excellent sense of territory, and I'm afraid they will just have to learn that this particular territory is off limits to them, and that they will have to hunt for their food someplace else besides in Will and Anne's garden. Hmm. All right, ah, is that acceptable? Ah, 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 okay. They still refuse to sign the verdict, Your Honors. They say they have a right to live, and they cannot live on grass or greens or eat the things that we gnomes do. This is certainly a dilemma, all right. We will try to find a proper solution to this problem. Case adjourned until tomorrow night at the same time. Oh, my goodness. This is a very complicated case, Danny. This is a delicate issue, Will. I can't force my ruling on these animals just because you are a friend of the gnomes. I am not asking you to compromise your integrity. I'm merely trying to save the lives of my animals. I understand that, Will. I'm just saying that if I side totally with you, my spirit of fairness would be questioned, and then we would have no power. I think what we need here is a compromise. What compromise? I think that you should make a reasonable offer to the hawks and the foxes. For example? Since you like to eat meat the same as them, you could offer them a certain amount of meat once or twice a week. But we can't go near them. You could find a location in the forest where you could leave the meat for them. That way they can come and pick up the food without seeing you and being frightened away. What do you think of that idea, Anne? I'd try anything to stop them from attacking the animals. I believe it will stop them. I will make them sign an agreement to that effect. This is a very good and fair compromise. Maybe the hawks and the vultures will agree, but I have doubts about the foxes. Why are you worried about the foxes? I think that once they pick up the scent of the birds, they will not be able to resist their nature, and they will attack the poor defenseless geese. Well, now, my friends, that has an easy solution. But if I tell you, you must make a promise to me never to reveal where you have gotten this information. Do I have your word? You have my word that any secret of the gnomes is safe with us, Judge. All right, as long as we understand each other. You have my word also, Judge Klaus. Ah. All right, go to the hairdresser and ask him for a sack of human hair. Then draw a circle around the garden, spreading heaps of hair every 10 yards or so. You see, when you spread the human hair around the garden, the animals will smell it and think humans are nearby, and they won't come anywhere near the place. Remember, you promised not to tell. I, I promise. promise. Grand. Now we will meet again after the hearing tonight, and hopefully the animals will sign. Now I would like to present my verdict. Taking into account that the humans, Will and Anne, have promised to provide meat twice a week for the foxes, hawks and such, it is my final judgment that no animal shall trespass the boundaries of this garden unless he comes in peace and brotherhood. All creatures must respect the lives and safety of all other creatures. And furthermore, any animal who doesn't abide by this ruling will be severely punished. Is this acceptable? Are all the defendants in agreement? Yeah, they are very pleased with the new verdict, Your Honor. Then as the duly appointed representative of the defendants, you will sign the proclamation that my assistant has prepared. Sign here, please. Thank you. Thanks. Case adjourned. You're all dismissed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Klaus. That was a smart compromise. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you, my friends. But now we have to go, I'm afraid. Uh, yep. Judge, Will and Anne would like to see you right now. I'm sure they just want to thank you and say goodbye, Klaus. Let's go, Danny, and say goodbye to our new friends. Goodbye, my friends. No, we'll have a gnome goodbye. Ah, of course. Hmm. <laughs> thank you both so very much. Don't mention it, Will. Goodbye, friends, and thanks. So long now. Ah. Uh. Goodbye, it's been a pleasure just to meet you, Judge. Goodbye, Anne. I only wish all humans could be like you two. Goodbye, Danny. <laughs> Ready to go, Henry? Well, now, that's what I call a big send-off. And a thunderous one, too. Good thing I had something soft to land on. It's just like a feather mattress. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that Danny's winging it up. Uh, bless you. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Danny. Goodbye. It was nothing. Come on, Henry. Let's go. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Danny. 
Ah, so that's the story of our encounter with humans. I wish all people could be like Will and Anne, respecting nature and loving animals. Just like us gnomes, we have to be careful to take care of our planet, because it's the only one we have, and it's our home. Schlitzweitz! <laughs> In our next episode, Klaus takes a walk down memory lane where he remembers his beloved wife, Agnes. The sight of their names carved in a tree brings back many memories, including the judge's childhood and his courtship and romance with Agnes. He also remembers how humans brought danger to the forest and tragedy to his life. Please don't miss Klaus's story, our final episode.